This is all good stuff, Cody. So uh, how long has it been since the last time we talked? When did we talk? August? I thought we talked in like June. June. See, that's the way I am. That's the way my brain works, right? I'm like, this was just a month ago. Because I I was thinking September. I said August because I already know how my brain works. But yeah, June. And in June, you were about to do what? I was about to walk across the nation. And why were you going to do that? Uh, Because I'm a pediatric cancer survivor. Uh, I fought Ewing sarcoma at age 14. Uh, And I was told many things, but one of the main ones being that I would never walk normally again in my life. So a way of spreading hope to those that are fighting and spreading a lot of awareness and um, raising some funds to help these families, we decided to go on a crazy adventure. I've talked to a lot of folks who have run or cycled or whatever across the United States. And so it fascinates me what people go through physically, emotionally, as they cross through the country. It's really fascinating. So give me the like the 200 words on where you are at this point And, you know, what's what are the top three things that that stood out for you? in your journey so far 200 words in of six months that that's tough yeah this is media training we're down in austin texas currently okay uh, taking a huge detour my instagram is titled overcomer team and we've titled that specifically that because eventually we hope to have a group of overcomers and uh in life i tend to make things that are already hard much harder on myself and this is <laughs> this is exactly that i made it much harder so as we were hitting Topeka, Kansas, going in the most direct route that we possibly could, the weather passes were shutting down certain uh, mountain passes in De- Denver and Utah. So we were like, okay, well, let's go south. Just so happened we picked up one of the highlights of our journey so far has been also getting on the Darren Woodson podcast. Uh, that was our first like in-person larger podcast and was super excited about that. Uh, he's a former cowboy player and some of the other guys run that as well. And they're helping us network with the Dallas community and and all of that. Dallas itself has turned to be one of the greatest detours I've taken because we were able to meet with a large Ewing sarcoma group. Uh, And these are parents, friends, uh, neighbors, kids that have fought or are fighting. There was about three kids there that just finished treatment that were all in high school um, I was able to connect with them, their families. They want me as a, you know, like a mentor for their, for their children. Uh, and, and a lot of people were moved. I was able to give a speech and that was probably one of the most special moments on this trip. Before that, the other spot in the detour was Oklahoma city and uh, in Oklahoma city, we were able to meet with majority of the state house representatives. Uh, so that was very, very cool. Uh, We were also able to get a university there involved with wanting to do a little fundraiser, uh, a walk fundraiser for us next year. Um, So we had some really good networking going on there in Oklahoma. Honestly, (laughs) the craziest thing in Oklahoma was that we got into a two accidents within six hours and um, I was involved or at fault for neither. So I don't know how how the luck with that one works out. But, uh, but yeah, I, and, and I'm only using the detour part as the, the main spots because, well, that's current, right? So I just, so, so in terms of the story arc though, you were, you pivoted mid, yes. mid arc. And some of that was because you ran into an obstacle, but it sounds like some of that was because you found an opportunity and pivoted towards that opportunity and and that's kind of because of the your methodology in doing this was like, heck, I'm not going to figure it all out ahead of time. I'm just going to go. Right. right. And that's 100 percent correct. I mean, it, it's it's so much of a faith journey for me as well. Like mm-hmm. the journey of, hey, this is, you know, putting it on my faith, putting it on my effort, my hard work and just being like, hey, we're just going to keep putting one foot on the other. If there's a place that we can make an impact and people there that are willing to embrace the impact and help us spread awareness and and uh touch lives in their own community we're not going to necessarily go out of the way like we're not going to bypass that and just hit the pier this is all about impact and so that's really what we're trying to keep first is the impact of what this can do so a lot of times when i talk to folks who are doing this sort of thing there's there's people they run into in a bit of serendipity and you're talking about this sort of with this dude's podcast where you'll be walking on the road and somebody will pass in a car and pull over and say, 
hey, do you know I'm the CEO of XYZ, right? Did you have any of those kind of interactions? <laughs> no CEOs on the side of the road yet. Uh, so if any CEOs are listening, that we ha- I have ran into two other crossers, um, which I'm not sure is likely or unlikely. I'm, I'm not really sure, uh, sure the stats on that one. But yeah, I ran into two other crossers. Both were near St. Louis. Uh, so um, coming out of St. Louis and going into St. Louis. So I, and to me, as, as you look at the map, I mean, pretty much if you're taking a northern route or a southern route, unless you're literally going like San Diego to Atlanta or something, mo- a lot of the routes do end up hitting St. Louis. Route 66, I think, is near there and things of that nature. So um, it makes sense. But that was that was probably uh, the closest I've come to that. Uh, I have had numerous people want to pull over and offer rides. And I'm like, I can't. And they're like, oh, you can to ride to the next town. And I'm like, no, no, not doing it like that. Thanks, though. Uh, so I'm pretty sure I've joked with my team. I'm like, we could turn this into a carpool fundraiser next year. And uh, <laughs> times I get offered a ride to the next town and how quickly we can do it. So, I mean, you're out there doing this for awareness and, and engagement, but you're also looking for funds, right? You're looking for money. Right. Um, and I can tell, you know, looking at you, you're like everybody else in the world. It's hard to say, hello, how are you? Can I have some money? You know, it just kind of goes against our culture. How have you balanced that ask with the outreach? Honestly, you know, it's, it is to that point where I, I do have to put more emphasis on, um, you know, I'm not perfect. And, uh, I think a lot of this times we get caught up the good intentions that our own heart has and think that others will naturally just rally behind that. And, um, you, ha- you know, we all have to overcome that idea of rejection and not, or being turned away or whatever. And I, a lot of people, if they get involved, especially with this, they know it's charitable. I'm not trying to win a race. I'm not trying to, you know, beat Pete across the, <laughs> across the country or whatever. Right. It, it is, it is charitable. So, I mean, that's made the ask a little easier. Um, you know, I think this, I, within myself, I still ask for network because I do believe that if we can have that group of people that consistently come behind this, um, whether that's just this walk, whether that's future endeavors, then we'll have the community that not only spreads motivation and support, but also, sp- um, raises money for these families in all their individual yeah, so the values in the network. Um, so you got to be capturing that network somehow, right? So when you meet somebody, you got to ca- right. capture their 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 contact information to add them to the network. Right. So you can right. build build that sort of mailing list going forward. Uh, build your charity. So that's cool. Now you also in this what six months, right? Six months, seven months, six months, six months. Six months. How's the physical go? How did the physical part of it go? It's uh, outside of getting through the hills. The hills really did a toll on my hips. Um, I think after uh, we were super strong in the beginning, walking through New Jersey uh, for about 100 miles. And then as we hit the Appalachia, my hip, I think it was my right hip. It just started like just going nuts. And um, we found out as I passed through my hometown that my hips were rotated down and separated. (laughs) So the chiropractor adjusted that one. Uh, But pretty much from that moment forward, I limped my way to Cincinnati for about a solid month. Uh, Then we felt really good going down into Louisville. uh, And then then the rolling hills, I had no idea that, you know, uh, Southern Indiana and all that was all rolling hills too. So then we started feeling a little bit more agitation. Um, The foam roller and all that was coming in clutch to try to just loosen up the body. And um, honestly, after we hit about St. Louis, it, roughly, uh, we were able to get a few other like chiropractic sessions donated along our route. Uh, super thankful for those. And that has helped us tremendously just stay like holistically healthy um, as far as my joints go. My foot and ankle have done surprisingly well. Uh, every day, my feet hurt, which is <laughs> probably very normal. Uh, yeah. But, but it's not, especially because of my disability, like just so painful that I didn't want to be on my foot and, um, through rest and ice and just staying, you know, keeping it elevated after I was done every day, 
we've actually really developed a good pattern and, and have been, been all right. Cool. Yeah. So people, my experience talking to other people, right? Even, you know, hundred percent ultra runners, right? right? They have this arc where it starts out really easy. Everybody's excited. I guess you could say this about any journey, but this in particular, physically, it starts out fairly easy. And then they hit a point where it gets really hard and something hurts, right? It's Mm -hmm. a knee, it's a hip, it's a something hurts. But then somewhere towards the, you know, halfway two thirds point, it all just comes together and your body figures it out. And it's like, it's mindful after that. Yeah. Right? It's still it's, hard, but it's mindful. Yeah. And that's, that's really weird that you say that because it's like, you know, and that's where my mindset is today. Like, it's not that it's, it's not that my body doesn't hurt, but it's like, we, it just feels like things are more in sync today. Um, and then from the period of week two through like really almost, almost uh, before I hit Texas, it was pretty much kind of that transition period. I think what you were talking about. If I look at the map, you got a, uh, you got a set of mountains between you and the pier. Yeah. And this time of year, that's not easy. You, you know, unless you have a snowmobile. Yeah. One of the reasons why we tried to bend South. So we're trying to go from where we're at now, the next larger city would be El Paso. And we're hoping that we can ride the border okay, and make it that direction. Yeah. Out of, uh, you know. That's really far south. It's really far south. That's as far south as you can get in the United States. That's <laughs> pretty much. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, if you ride the border, the mountains are still there and it's still going to be cold, but you might be able to avoid some of the, the really bad weather that they get up in Colorado. Yeah. The, the hope was avoid the snow, right? Yeah. Because there's, there's really no, like, this is hard enough for me to just walk on pavement, much less if you want me to go start hiking in, put put a snow up a mountain, um, that's just not going to happen. Yeah, and I think the elevation in, it's going to be the Sierra Nevadas, right? Is that my math? I think so. Right on that? Sounds right. Um, I think the elevation is a little bit less, too, whereas Colorado, you're yeah. going to get up over uh, eight ten thousand 10,000 feet. Got some big ones down there in Colorado. Yeah. <laughs> so I think you're probably only going to get up like yeah six to eight thousand. But my geography isn't perfect for that part of the world. It uh, it's it's pretty though. It's pretty. Look, I've never been, so I'm very excited. I've uh, you know, and that's been one of the greatest parts about this is just every experiencing every little part of the country uh, that we've passed, right? And um, you know, understanding that the difference between the the inner city and the uh, small little town outskirts is not really that much different. You know, people are people is what you realize and everybody is ultimately the same. It's uh it's very interesting. And, uh, and, and the country has so much to offer as far as like sites and everything. It's uh, it's gorgeous. So that's, that's a golden truth right there that I wish we could can and inject into people somehow, you know, you're, you're getting the gift of travel. Uh, across the U.S., I've traveled across the U.S. and with and the world. And what you realize is people are people, right? It's yep. easy to say, "Hey, it's us and it's them," yep. when you don't travel. But when you're having coffee with somebody, that's not as easy, right? You realize right. it's not us and them; it's us and us, right? Everybody's, just, you know, at some level, everybody's right. everybody's people are people. They're concerned about the same thing, right? Yep. They're and, concerned about their kids, their family, yep, all that stuff. And it doesn't change. It really doesn't. I mean, you know, you, uh, the same issues that you would expect or fear, whichever your mindset is of in the country, the inner city, the the suburbs or this or that, it's the same, like, it's the same rational fear across the whole nation. Like everywhere you go or, or the same, uh, mindsets of people that you interact with. So cars, I've had two or three cars intentionally try to hit me. Um, yeah. was, that was very interesting. No, I mean, just sort of swerving at you, right? To well, one you. actually went into the front yard of somebody. So that was, uh, they they followed me into the front yard of some uh, person's house on the side of the road. So, wow. uh, but, you know, all that stuff has taken place in very, very, very rural towns. Um, I haven't been very, as welcomed as I felt, you know, walking in some of them. Um, 
And I think a lot of that has to do with some of the pandemic going on and uh, just emotions being high. But, uh, but yeah, it's, it's left for a very interesting, uh, interesting sociology experiment. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to write some of this stuff down. Are you writing this down? I do. Uh, I have a lot of videos in my phone. So I post, I try to post like a daily update, um, but I also have like extensive video logging in my phone so that um, I found it was easier for me just to record it versus actually going and writing in a journal. Um, so yeah, I started talking to my phone a lot. People probably think I'm insane on the side of the road. Yeah. So what you need is a historian. You need to hire somebody out of one of the local colleges to be your historian. That's their <laughs> whole job. That's what they did in, in the old times. You know, Caesar, Alexander, they all had their personal historian. They make you look good, too. So put us all in the textbooks, right? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Um, Power of the pen. Yeah. So so we talked a little bit before about, you know, what's next right yeah. and you're starting to get into that part of the journey where you can see the end yeah i'd say the light at the end of the tunnel you probably have some tunnels in front of you but the end and you say what now right because you're a young dude and you say okay at this age i did this giant thing right so i have to find something that's bigger and better than this and that's sort of a I, there's there's probably a technical term for that but this the next thing i have to do has to be bigger and better you know, that's, that's a trap. Yeah. I'm realizing that's a dead end, right? Because yeah. it, it's, it's something that, especially like with my, you know, some of my mentors and people that on my team that we've talked to, it's like, okay, so I have this checklist of things that I want to do that I was told I would never do again um, to inspire kids to keep fighting and that they can hold their dreams, no matter what people tell them, hold their dreams to be valuable and that they can achieve them through faith and hard work. And we want to continue to go down that checklist. But one person brought up to my attention, they were like, okay, but are people going to take interest if after you walk the nation, you fill in the blank, you know, you go bike something or whatever, you know, whatever, fill in the blank with whatever you could think of. And uh, so then it got my wheels turning and that is a trap because you can't like, you can't predict like, okay, is there something bigger than this? I don't, I don't know. I mean, maybe, yeah. uh, but I think it's as long as we keep impact first, worry and, and getting that awareness continued out there. Um, that's really my goal. That's my plan. You know, I'm not sure, not sure if there's, uh, you know, any other route after that, that even comes remotely close to the size of this feat itself. Yeah. And it's, it's interesting. We were talking about this before too, right? It's new year's resolution time, right? So, right. you know, what, what do you resolve to do? And it's, and you gotta, that's another trap. You get, you gotta boil it down to what's my, why, what's my purpose, Am I fulfilling that purpose is what I'm doing today, fulfilling yeah. that, right? And every, every little thing you do has to lead to that, right? I've actually challenged some of my close family and friends to instead of make one resolution, make 12 that build upon themselves, right? So like you make like, so the month of January, say you're going to work out two days a week, right? And the month of February comes, say you're going to walk one day a week with working out twice and the month of, you know, March, say you're drinking a gallon of water or whatever. I mean, I think a gallon's obnoxious for some people, but you know, whatever you get the gist and you, every month you continue what the previous month was. So you kind of make an evolutionary lifestyle of those habits versus a, versus a 30 day fad that you may phase out. Yeah. And that's, that's, uh, that's a great way to hack the process is to chunk it up into small deliverables and then chunk it up into small time frames. So you do a, yeah. a five day right. routine or you do a right. 20 day streak, right. you know, chunk it up into something that you can see the end. Cause that keeps your brain from getting overwhelmed. Completely. And, and honestly, that's a big way that we've looked at this walk as a whole, you know, uh, we didn't know if we would make it back to Cincinnati, much less make it to where we are. Um, and there was a shocking moment that we hit when we realized, oh gosh, we walked literally a rectangle since St. L or since Kansas City, <laughs> because we are <laughs> the amount of miles that we've covered from Topeka to Austin, Texas, is literally just we'd almost be done, right? Like that yeah. would be basically Vegas approaching whatever. Yeah. And it's like, oh gosh, that was a pit in our stomach. But we were like, look at the impact that we've had. Uh, and let's just continue our model of looking 
We hit this city. All right, what's the next one? Okay, next one, next large one is El Paso. Don't get any further. Don't get to the pier yet. Go to the next town, right? Like the next, you know, and then, okay, that's a 70 mile block. You got to do it. Go get 70 miles, you know, and then cool. You got that. Enjoy a nice barbecue sandwich because that seems to be everything. Yeah. And then when you hit California, you're just going to keep going. You're going to go up into (laughs) Oregon. Look, <laughs> circle around, but then it'll be springtime. You can cut back across the uh, the continental divide. Yeah, that's uh, someone made the joke about that. They were like, "So, Cody, so you're going to walk to Alaska, outline the whole United States, right? Like you're just going to." Yeah. And I was like, "Well, it's not the plan, uh, but you know, who knows where life will take me? Who knows, right? But, uh, how are you holding together um, mentally, uh, emotionally? What's the arc been like? You know, uh, as far as mental goes." I mean, it's been, it's, it gets lonely out there when you're by yourself for eight hours a day or whatever. I'd say at this point, I'm a little bit used to the mental side of that. As long as I can keep my head out of the muck of those questions of what's next, right? Like what, what can I get bigger than, you know, keep, keep my head out of the trapped questions. I'm really in a good headspace. And in fact, I think a lot of times I find myself, um, kind of just getting into like a, not I guess a walker's trance, right? Just like a cadence of trekking poles. So this, I'll stop you there because this is another thing about transcon um, runs and walks is people at some point, time starts to act differently. Time starts to dilate on them, right? So you're out there for eight hours, but you're like, huh, that felt like half an hour because I dropped into whatever this state is. So great. You're again, your your body adapts, but your mind adapts as well, right? And right, and you get this time dilation effect. Yeah, yeah. And I've I've felt that completely because my squad car that follows me and has my water and everything, uh, they were asking like, um, you know, I the change, mind you, before I say this, of summer to winter with hydration and stuff has been a weird adjustment because of how much I was sweating versus now, you know, not yeah. so much and all that, but. Um, but they're like, dude, you just walk seven miles. Do you need anything (laughs) like, Oh, you know, when before I was breaking probably roughly every two and a half miles, roughly just to to get a little something in my system and move on. Um, and, and now it's triple that time. And I don't realize it all the time. Sometimes, uh, it's, it's some days feel like it's just a dread to get out of bed and be like, okay, we got to go back and do this again. I, you know, But once you start and I get that first mile in, then that mental side effect kicks in and it's just like, oh, okay, here we go. Yep. Yep. You're in the groove. Yep. So Uh, they call that the zone. Right. Right. Yeah. But you asked about emotion and I think that is probably one of the harder spots of this is the emotional, you know, the emotional journey that it's been. So my other brother, he's in the United States Army. And, uh, you know, he's at a station in North Carolina right now. He he was deployed to Afghanistan when all that stuff was happening and all that. And, uh, and I'm like, it is kind of like I self-deployed myself <laughs> across the nation to do this large, you know, six and what is probably going to end up being a nine and nine month journey, right? Like uh, just to do this. And it's like the emotional toll of, you know, not being around some of my family because I, I love my family and, uh, you know, my girlfriend and people like that, you know, it's, it gets rough sometimes, but, um, but you always keep your why, like you said, your why first and, uh, and it brings, brings all that stuff together. Yeah. So I'm proud of you. Good job. Thank you. Yeah. I wasn't sure you were going to make it past Cincinnati, but it seems like you found it. You found yeah, the please. secret, you found the secret sauce. So, so good for you. Um, I'm going to think about some other people to introduce you to. I know I already introduced you a whole bunch of people, but yeah, uh, I would highly appreciate it. Thank my, you. My, every time I talk to you, my brain starts churning. So, all right. So I'm going to let you go. What, right. uh, give us, give us the ask, give us the pitch. You're laughing on this. <laughs> no, cause you are giving me the pitch. <laughs> you wanted uh, the pitch, right? I, I wasn't speaking literally. Tell us where people can help you, where they can contact you. Uh, that's what I want. I wanted a rise. <laughs> uh, if anybody's interested in talking or in following my journey, please go check out Overcomer Team on Instagram, as well as TikTok. That's a crazy social site itself. Uh, or Cody O'Connor on Facebook, Champions Do Overcome on Facebook. I'd love to connect um, and, and chat more about 
ways y'all can help or, or what you guys can do to help this journey, but, but more so help families in your own communities. So uh, championsdooovercome.org is the website. And if anybody out there is able, willing, please donate at the donation link at the bottom. Yeah, and I, I've, I've, I've been following your Instagram um, since you started, and some of it's a riot, right? Some of it's pretty funny. You know, it's all that stuff like, hey, it's raining again today, or that video you did with the, the UFC fighter guy was hilarious because yeah. he's like, oh, this is great. You're looking at the camera like, what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's uh, he, my chiropractor is his chiropractor as well. And uh, he was he he has not stopped giving him crap about how heavy he was breathing in that. All right, man, we'll let you go. Good luck. Hey, thank you so much. Have a good one. All right. Cheers.